Hey, 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 welcome back. So, less than 60 miles, thin red games, thin red games, thin red line games, maybe. Let's try that. Uh, full the gap, 1985, World War Three hypothetical. I've done some video of gameplay. There's probably six videos floating around. They all came out in the wrong order because I clicked something too fast and then I figured the hell with it. Let's just roll with it the way it is. So it, uh, there are six videos and they came out in the wrong order and deal with it. You'll work it out. Follow the numbering. Uh, I thought I'd take the time to have a, another conversation about impressions on the game from the perspective of opposed play now. A uh, buddy of mine and I, Pete, we played four turns through and <clears throat> really did a, I think a sterling job of trying to get the rules uh, one, you know, closer to 100% accurate versus my gameplay where I ignored or forgot some rules for the Soviets, which is why they were a little more successful sooner uh, than perhaps we might have expected. But there's one thing that uh, we, a couple of conclusions we came to, and I'm not going to get into actually this will probably be a long video but for good reasons uh th there's something about the way thin red lines uh, uh line uh games uh, structures their scenarios that <clears throat> you learn the mechanics in the scenarios the smaller scenarios but you don't get the full flavor of the game experience because you have boundaries right so in this game we had boundaries here and and that that's gonna change your tactics and your approach and your thinking about how you will manage the terrain and the enemy. And the enemy is going to manage and change what they do and how they react to you, knowing that you're gonna come within certain boundaries. So there's that to keep in mind, and I don't know, know that that needs to change. I don't know that that needs, that's a good thing or a bad thing, I just know that it impacts the scenario gameplay and the scenario gameplay is a smaller scenario gameplay is not representative of the campaign gameplay. Now, smart people will say, well, hang on a second, Kevin, you haven't played the campaign. Well, based on my experience with uh, the, the next war uh, uh, game uh, under an iron sky, it is very different, right? So, that, so there's that. Uh, and the, the, the scenarios have the same problem. So let's just talk about, or, or issue, it's not necessarily an issue or a problem, but it's just a fact, right? So there's that to keep in mind. Don't walk away from the game system because you don't like the way a smaller scenario plays out. I think it, we all owe ourselves the gameplay of the campaign to fully judge the system. Now, fortunately, today we played a smaller scenario. We played a 14-turn scenario. We only got four turns done. And it was really an opportunity for Pete to experience combat and movement. And unfortunately, Pete's die roll sucked. So he rolled two ones on two combats, and I think a two on a third combat. And he had crappy... Uh, uh, he was on a differential table of the worst differential table he could be on, which was minus five. And he also had a combat on a plus four. Uh, so the first attack, he lost two steps. And the second attack, he lost one step. And there was a level of frustration I could see was building with Pete. And uh, he said, hey, look, you know, we go through all these, <clears throat> all these steps here. And let me show you a couple of things while I'm talking to you. Uh, here it is. So there, so there is a, and Pete made the comment of it, of things being procedural, right? So here's our combat sequence. There are eleven steps to go through. <clears throat> Some of them are pretty straightforward, you know, picking who's attacking, uh, working out who's defending, and then then you start doing some math. You're doing some combat combat differentials. Then you work out uh, all your uh, combat support and all this sort of good stuff here, electronic warfare and support modifiers and all these other things, right? So you, you, there's seven or eight steps here that matter, all the rest of fluff. But in the combat modifiers, there are also a number of things that need to happen, right? You've got to make sure that you do your math on posture, uh, look at nationality if there's any of that. Uh, but um, 
oh, nationality doesn't really matter in this scenario we were playing. But terrain and attrition points and uh, electronic warfare is going to be important. We'll talk about that in a sec. And then adjacency is another critical one, as is engagement, right? Now, those few things there, excluding the combat support role, right, are, the, are the, one of the key areas where you can make a, a significant impact upon the differential, the column you're going to resolve the combat on. And I'm going to come back to you in a minute. I've got to go take care of something.